I would I was very excited to be going into Vietnam uh, we were trained we were trained well we knew what we were getting into and I, I was really excited about it <laughs> I remember very clearly arriving in Vietnam on Braniff International I remember landing in Da Nang and getting off the plane as we were getting off guys were getting on who had been there for 12 months 12 months and 20 days. My first impression was, God, these guys look weird. And they look dirty. They had these, and these kind of, in some ways, it's almost freakish smiles. You could tell they, uh, you know, after 12 or 13 months of combat, they had been affected by it. April 11th, they suddenly told us we were going on an operation and they took us on helicopters and landed us on a, an older fire base about uh, at the base of the Quaison Mountains. And immediately, within about 10 minutes, a guy stepped on a booby trap and it blew his leg off. So we had to be very careful about that. Our platoon was going to go down the, this river bank about a mile and go up through this village and sweep the village because it was a well-known Viet Cong area. We went down the river about a mile, cut up through the village, and it was eerily quiet in the village. There were old men, women, and children, but they were looking at us, and it was like eerily quiet. And I saw a Viet Cong jump up. He had on white, and he threw a hand grenade like that. One of those, our guys were killed, and about three were wounded just in that event. And we were online here firing. I, I fired uh, about 10 magazines, which is 200 rounds. The guy, there was a machine gunner on me on the right, and there was one on the left. One of them fired 1,100 rounds, and another one fired 900 rounds. And I've calculated that within that 200-yard area, we fired about 6,000 rounds of small arms fire. We wanted to see if we killed any of them. And we got over there, we saw some blood trails, but we didn't see any bodies. All of a sudden, out of the blue, there was a crack from a rifle. The guy standing next to me dropped like a ton of bricks. Right, he dropped right into his tracks. And it was, it was an eerie, like weird, almost like out of body. It was like, is he faking? What? He was always joking. Hell no, he wasn't faking. He had a red dot right there. He's just laying there with his eyes open. And I closed his eyes. And then I was wondering, I said, I should be crying something up but I, I didn't cry and none of them cried we loved this guy like our brother but I think there's in combat like that uh, your your will to survive something takes over and you just block it it's blocked out of your mind so you don't think about that you're thinking about the enemy you're thinking about what's happening next that's when the reality set in that this is serious. This is dead serious. It's not, it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be exciting. It's going to be like this for the next 12 months. And it was. It, this was like August the 29th, 1968. August the 28th. I said, okay. You guys are going to Dodge City in the morning. The last place you wanted to go. Because every time you went, you were going to get guys killed and you're going to get guys wounded. It was a place that somebody circled on a map or did like this, and it was called a TAOR, Tactical Area of Responsibility. There were uh, two North Vietnamese regiments somewhere in there, there a couple of Viet Cong battalions and a North Vietnamese sapper battalion. 
And they weren't like all in one place, they were scattered. But so I'm walking point man for our company in Dodge City, my the worst nightmare. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> we had surprised them and they were trying to set up an ambush for us. And as it turned out, this whole firefight went off and on for like a day and a half, almost two days. We discovered, I think we captured one of them and discovered that they had a 140, 200 guys waiting for us and waiting for the right moment, but we broke that up. And we were getting ready to move out to the tree line, all of a sudden, choop, 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 choop. 60 millimeter mortars, the enemy was firing mortars, so you knew you had uh, about five to 10 seconds to find a place. And I could see the mortars coming in, at which where they were coming from, they were zigzagging like boom, boom, boom. They, and they were walking them toward us. And one hit right in front of me. It blew back in my face. I was wounded. And coronal abrasions to both eyes. I was evacuated by helicopter along with 20, about 20 other of our guys who had been shot shot in various places, in the leg, in the shoulder, in the stomach, uh, just all over the place. You, I mean, on, I, I think about it every day. I'm thinking about Vietnam. And every once in a while, and I do this by myself, every once in a while, sometimes I just go off and cry by myself, nobody knows about it, and I just cry uncontrollably. And then I get over it, and then I'm back to normal. <laughs> what bothers me is the 58,000 people who were killed, and hundreds of thousands who were wounded, some very badly. And of course, the guys I was in the Marines with, it bothers me a lot. What they gave up, and what they were willing to do, because the country wanted them to. Forget the politics or the outcome. You know, somebody asked me, said, what was the worst battle you were in? I said, why don't we ask the 58,000 people, their parents, what was the worst battle your son was in? It's an easy answer. It's the one you got killed in. 